Hello programmers! Today we're going to talk about the Scratch programming language platform. You can access it for free from scratch.mit.edu and it was created to help teach kids how to program. So if you've got a little one that you want to get interested in programming or even if you're an adult and you just want to play around with Scratch because it makes things very accessible for everyone then you can go ahead and create an account or if you have an account sign in so if you want to join Scratch and start creating your own projects you'll come up with your username and password I already have one so I'm going to pause the video and sign in and if you're creating a project you can go ahead and click on create And they always start you out with this cute little kitty cat. And you'll start running your program by hitting the green flag, but we don't have any code yet, so nothing's going to happen. So let's start out by having our little kitty cat say something. Along the left, you're going to see these colored dots. Go down to events, and I'm going to pick when the green flag is clicked. So this will be the trigger for something to happen. And what do I want to happen? Well, I want, let me go under the look section, the purple. I want to say the kitty cat to say something, and I want the bubble with the words to pop up for two seconds. And we'll just say hello and see what happens. So if you hit the green flag kitty cat says hello and after two seconds that message disappears well in my game I want it to be the kitty cat is collecting fish to eat for dinner um, so I'm gonna have it say um, help me collect 10 fish and he'll say that for two seconds so you can again hit the green flag to start and then after two seconds that'll disappear all right well, to collect some fish, we're going to need to put some fish on the board here. Now, on the scene, I'm going to create a variable to keep track of how many fish we've collected so far. So I'll go under variables, and I want to make a new variable. So I'll click on this make variable. And I'm going to say, so a lot of programmers are used to very condensed variable names, and you can't have spaces in your variable name, so I would say something like number of fish. But in Scratch, you're allowed to have regular English words with spaces, so I could just say number of fish, something like that. And when it's talking about all sprites only or this sprite only do you want this variable to be visible to just the kitty cat or do you want it to be visible to any other things that we put on the screen so i'll just leave for all sprites selected and hit ok right now the only sprite or image that we have in the scene is this little kitty cat and it's got the name sprite one if you want to give it a more descriptive name you could call it cat um, i want another sprite so down here in the lower right corner there's a few ways to pull more sprites in from the project for the project you could upload one if you made some graphic art and it's on your computer and you want to upload it or you downloaded something from the web and have permission to use it you could do a surprise you could go ahead and draw things inside of scratch or i'm going to choose a sprite by searching from the images that they've included if i type in fish i see a couple different choices i'm going to choose this first one and as i hover over i see there's four different costumes or different variations of the fish when i click it I get the first one, but I can look at the second tab, costumes, and say, well, I really like the blue fish better. So you could delete the other costumes, but I'm going to keep them in case in a future version, maybe I want different fish to appear, um, not just the blue fish. So right now, the fish is bigger than the cat. So I'm going to change the size so it's going to be 50% of what it what the original size was. I don't all, also like that he it's positioned on the cat to start with. So I'm going to take that and drag it to a different section of the screen. Notice that my code disappeared when I added that new sprite. If you click back on the cat, there's your original code. So each of these sprites have their own code. So for the fish, I could do some code just like I did for the cat. So I'm going to have an event when the flag is clicked, and then I want the fish to appear somewhere randomly on the screen. Oh, and they've got it really close to the top under motion. Go to random positions. So let's see what happens when we hit run. 
we go to a random position. If I stop the game and run again, we go to a random position. Well, I want the fish to keep moving. I don't want it only to move once because then it's quite easy to click on it. So I'm going to do something called a loop where I'm going to ha go under the control section and say, I want to keep repeating something um, until I've caught 10 fish. So what do I want to keep doing is I want to keep repeating and I'm connecting these bits of code will go from the top action to the bottom action and I want to repeat until you've caught 10 fish and what is it that I want to do let me break these apart and put this go to random position inside of my loop um, and then the condition I want here, so if you hit run, you're going to see it's happening way too fast. That the fish is jumping around, you'll never be able to click on it. So we need to put a little wait in there so it'll pause. So under the events, um, actually it's the control section, there's a wait one second. Let me put that inside my loop. So we wait a second, move the fish, wait a second, move the fish. And then I've left this blank for now, but we're going to fill that in later. So if I hit run, my fish is going to be jumping around. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, I want to also make it so that if you click on the fish, then the number of fishes co fish collected is increased by one. So I'm going to go under events and say when this sprite is clicked, so this is a different starting event um, other than clicking on the flag. So whenever you click on the fish, and then I want to change my variable and have it go up by one. So change my variable by one. So let's go ahead and run it. And I'm going to try clicking on the fish. And let's see, either I haven't clicked on it yet or my number of fish isn't going up. So, oh, I see what's wrong. I left it as my variable instead of picking number of fish. So make sure you've got this matching the variable you're keeping track of. And then if we click on that, the number of fish is going up. But right now, it'll just go up forever and ever and ever because I left this blank. I need to put something in there so it'll stop when you get to 10 fish. So let me try to find that. And if you scroll in this code section, you'll go through the motion, look, sound, events, and control. So if you're not sure which section something's in, you can scroll and look through all your possible options. I'm going to look in the green section, and I'm looking for something where you can have a variable equal to, instead of 50, it's going to be 10 for me. And the variable name that I want is the, the one I created, the number of fish. Whoops, I put that in the wrong spot. No. There we go. Okay, so let me move this code around. All right, let's give it a try. So it should be, once I've clicked on the fish 10 times, then it should it should now um, stop and we can so there's a couple bugs I noticed one is that when I restart the game the number of fish doesn't go back to zero so I'm already at 16 and another thing is when it gets to 10 it doesn't stop and say you won the game so I'm gonna do a couple fixes for that the first fix is I want to set the variable number of fishes to zero every time you restart the game and the other fix is I want to hide um, the fish once you break out of this loop, once you've already hit 10. And you can find a hide under the look section, the purple section. We'll put that there. And right below that is the sound. Let me play a sound. Um, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and play a sound. And instead of ocean waves, you could record yourself clapping, or we could search and see if they have another sound available other than ocean waves. If you want more choices other than the ocean waves and the bubbles or recording a sound yourself, go up to the top and look for the sounds tab and we can hit the on the lower left corner. Again, there's a way you can upload sounds. They can surprise you. You can record sounds. And I'm going to search through all the sounds they have on file and see if there's anything like applause or clapping. Let's try clapping. There is a few choices, hand clapping and clapping. Let's try adding that. Okay, that sounds exactly like what I want. So I'm going to go back to the code. And now that's going to be one of my choices. 
And now, just to make it quicker for us to test the game, I'm going to stop after collecting three fish. So we'll go help collect the fish by clicking on them. And then when it happens, you get your applause. And I'd like to also have the cat say, you won. So let's make a small modification to the code. And this code is going to be related to the cat, so I'm going to click over on the cat sprite. And I'm going to look under control for the wait until. So we're going to wait until the number of fish is equal to 10, or if we want to test it really quick, we can just say 3. Um, so I'm going to go back to, oh, let's see, we're looking for a condition where from my testing just to make it easier to test instead of doing 10 I'm just going to do 3 and the variable that we were working with is the number of fish all right so when that happens then I want to say something else so then I'm going to say you win and instead of having it just for a few seconds it's going to just stay on the screen you win all right, so let's test that out. I'm going to make sure that even though the cat's saying um, that you have to catch 10, really you just have to catch three for right now. And then you win. All right, this looks really good. I don't, I can change this to number of, to be 10 now. Oops, I didn't mean to remove that. I just meant to change the three to a 10. And then I'll go over to the fish and make sure that's now a 10. And the only thing I want to fix, I think, is the backdrop instead of having being a boring white backdrop you can um, choose the plus sign over here and they have a bunch of images you can look at I'm looking for something watery ooh I don't want my cat to be underwater but um, the water ones look pretty good I'm gonna try on a beach let's do this beach one and now I'm going to test it one more time and I might notice, oops, there are no fish. And the reason is I hid the fish once we won and we need to make sure that at the beginning of the game, right after they restart the game, uh, we make that fish visible again. So instead of a hide, I'm going to need to make a show and put that right at the beginning of the game. All right, we'll do one more test. Help me collect 10 fish, and these fish are going crazy, so it's hard to click on them, but I'm going to click 10 times, and then it should say I won. I can think of one more little adjustment is, I think sound adds a lot to the game, so I'm going to add, also say whenever you click on the fish, you're going to get a sound, so not just the applause at the end but let's play a little sound and again the sounds have their own tab and I searched through and I found another sound called ship ship bell it's just a little ting so now if you click on the fish and you get it you hear a sound that way if you misclick and you don't hear anything you know like the reason you didn't get a point is you didn't click on the fish all right, I think this is a great first Scratch project, so I'm going to stop here. But Scratch has a lot available, so if there's any kind of demand, any requests from my subscribers, I can make some more Scratch videos. Happy programming!